Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video. Today we will be talking again about cones, the smaller nose cones to be precise. So for the longest time, and even in my how to build SSTO videos, I was using the aerodynamic nose cone, these little guys right here. In the video I mentioned how the advanced nose cone was pretty much crap compared to these aerody aerodynamic nose cone, because one was heavier than the other, and when you're building an SSTO, weight is extremely important almost as important as drag as a matter of fact depending on what you're building they're about 50 50 they're just as important you cannot have one without the other so in my recent video when I was building the sea star I started to use these the Airstream protective shells 1.25 millimeter I was using them to replace oh hello the ace welcome to the fold oh no what I joined Space Space Call. Call. but I was using these in or uh, because I wanted to replace the aerodynamic nose cone because in my mind well actually we did some tests and the aerodynamic nose cone did create significant amount of drag during tests in comparison to the airstream protective shell which pretty much didn't create almost hardly any drag at all so I know drag is very important for an SSTO so I automatically switched over to using these instead trying to make it the lightest as possible by making it just a straight up little cone and done but it still weighs about almost the same as an advanced nose cone. Actually, to be honest, its core is the same as an advanced nose cone in weight, but when you build the fairing, you add more weight, so it could be even a little bit more. Anyway, the point is, I figured that the fact that, that the aerodynamic nose cone created so much drag, even though it was three times lighter almost, the drag was significant enough to hurt my Delta V, in comparison to something that's three times heavier, but created almost hardly any drag at all. However, in my video, I got lovingly yelled at. After what I can only describe as a passionate review, the only response response I could give to the comment was I like pancakes but however it made me wonder was this actually superior in comparison to this so after I came back from a grueling 12 hours I became possessed for the next five hours I would proceed to test and test and test and test and test I wanted the most simplest tests I can think of so I put the two different types of nose cones on tiny little SSTOs I would test them at different angles of ascension and even different types of weight when it came to fuel and efficiency I would make sure that I did these tests at least three times in a row to get an average. I don't know how to do scripts and I probably won't have time to learn so I just had to do it manually. Having a full-time job sucks but it pays the bills. I would test them at five degrees of ascension and acceleration. Mind you I had to turn off the overheating in order for these tests to work because I wanted to test them in the most extreme of circumstances in order to really get some hardcore results when it came to drag and weight of the uh, parts. So I tested them at five Five degrees I tested them at 10 degrees ascension I wrote down how much fuel I had left I wrote down how much Delta V was left I would even go as far as to try to make it as efficient as possible testing out the engines or the SSTOs that had different cones on them to figure out how much liquid fuel would get me into space and then how much oxidizer and liquid fuel I needed to get into orbit so that at the end once I got into orbit I would have a perfect amount of oxidizer and liquid fuel which would translate into Delta V and then finally my last tests was to turn off the ignore heat or heating and figure out just how fast and what angle these parts could go before they actually exploded. For example, I know that the aerodynamic nose cone can only withstand about 2400 when it comes to max temp in comparison to the Airstream protective shell, which can withstand 2600 of max temperature. So you would think that it'd be able to go, or the SSTO that's equipped with one would be able to fly at a lower ascent angle to build up more speed and therefore save more fuel. Well, the results varied and they were rather interesting you see the reason why I used a tiny SSTO and then had it ascend at a five degrees angle was because I know that larger SSTOs usually travel level until they reach a certain speed before they start to ascend to help maximize thrust and efficiency so I needed to know how these parts would react to these speeds at these angles interestingly enough the aerodynamic nose cone at five degrees angle of ascension had one magic moment where it did really well at 599 
Delta V left over, it was one of its best numbers. Whereas the best number that I could achieve with the, the S cone or the shell cone was 578 Delta V. But interestingly enough, over our three tests, the Delta V would vary between 535 and 520 or 421 with Delta V left over. In comparison to the shell cone, which consistently got higher numbers overall. In other words, with the shell cone, you'd get better numbers on average in comparison to the in comparison to the aerodynamic nose cone, which might give you a great number or advantage at one point in time, but only after a couple of launches of repeating the same type of launch. And then I tried the 10 degrees ascension, and no matter how hard I tried, the shielded cone always came out on top, albeit barely. In other words, these differences in delta V, even though the shell cone is better, the differences are so minute that I wouldn't even consider it being better. If anything, they were pretty much the same. Now this is when I changed with the fuel change. In other words, making it so that the fuel consumption was consumed precisely for each level of flight, the aero or atmospheric flight, and then the space flight or orbital maneuver, getting into orbit. With the five degrees, of course, the cone came out on top with its best numbers of 667 delta V, and the shielded cone, the best I could get it at was 603 delta V. So quite a little jump, whereas when it came to 10 degrees of ascension, the delta V, even though the cone did better, the S cone was not too far behind, and it really, they're pretty much the same. Now, mind you, I did like <laughs> three or four tests to try to get the best numbers I could, and then I put those on the board. But then came the actual heat, heat and speed, at least for a tiny SSTO. So for the cone, I had to actually ascend at 15 degrees because the heat would destroy it otherwise. It made it into orbit with a 715 delta V. And this is, of course, altering the fuel so that it used up as much fuel as it needed to get into through the atmosphere and into space, and then from space into orbit, so that when it was done getting into orbit, it had the same amount of oxidizer as liquid fuel, or at least it could burn up its complete supply of oxidizer and liquid fuel and have zero delta V remaining, so as fuel efficient as possible. And I did that with both. So the S cone did move faster, but it had to be, I had to ascend at 20 degrees angle, because any lower it would actually explode because it was moving so fast. Now this meant that it actually used very little in comparison to the regular aerodynamic nose cone when it came to liquid fuel going through the atmosphere. But once it got into space, primarily because of its 20 degree angle of ascension, so it didn't explode, that means it had to burn more in order to get into orbit. That coupled with its weight meant that it was severely hurt when it came to delta V. Now mind you, this is for a tiny SSTO. The numbers that I really wanted to look at was the ones that were like larger spacecraft. Your five degree ascension or your 10 degree ascension. Because your larger spacecraft, like I said before, usually fly about level until they reach a certain meters per second, then they start ascending. Now I haven't tested it on large craft yet, but if this if the tiny little SSTOs have proven anything, is that the weight still matters. Even though the fairing produces extremely very little drag, the weight can still hurt you. So here's what I'm going to do. I only have enough time for one test, but we're going to test this and see what kind of delta V I get. This is the lightning class SSTO. It's got all the bells and whistles when it comes to trying to make a super almost dragless craft. It has the wings that are slightly tilted up. They have a dihedral tilt, very slender. And of course it has that trick that we discovered with the fairing on the inside covering up the connection nodes, making the connection nodes believe that they're stowed in a fairing and therefore dragless. The fairing itself is very small, therefore very little weight. So let's test this out. So basically I'm cruising almost level until I reach about 300 meters per second and then I'll let it go and let it, let it ascend. Okay, so the first test, we have over 1,000 meters per second delta V left over to play with, so it was a good run. Now let's test it with the original aerodynamic nose cone.
Well now, that's definitely a noticeable, noticeable change. Oh, and by the way, remember the how to build SSTO that we built together? We're just adding a little bit of fuel tanks to it, putting an extra T100 fuel tank on top, doing a fairly risky low sea level ascension approach. I was able to squeeze uh, over 300 meters per second left delta V out of this thing. That's plenty to go anywhere you want in orbit. Not bad for the main body pretty much being passenger stuff. But anyway, yep, that's it. The aerodynamic nose cone is the winner in this thing. I will no longer go back to the tiny little fairings that I thought, that I thought was going to work. This is why testing is so important, so very Verily, verily, verily important. But anyway, thank you everybody for watching this Kerbal Space Program video. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you really liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I upload frequently. And once I get back into my schedule of doing things, and then it's going to be pretty much every other day. So love you all. Take care. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.